Good evening, people. Thank you, Stephanie. Actually, I am just a poor sailor trying to sell as much rum as possible, <laughs> not to have to drink it all myself. And uh, uh -huh. um, you might uh, look at this and see why. Uh, what have sailing ships to do here in uh, Pannonia? And even uh, you might see the fact that they uh, will not uh, have place in the noisy de la Sea. Uh, this is not just about sailing and about sailing ships. It is about passion and about idealism. And as we heard in the talks before, also now it is uh, very hard to do it alone. So uh, I didn't do it alone. And I uh, shared it with my uh, two friends. Uh, and together we make the Tres Hombres. And uh, before I tell you a nice story, I want to uh, give you some facts which might uh, scare you a little bit. <coughs> but that's what I should do. They did that uh, with me. And the uh, whole world should know those things uh, about shipping. Uh, the 16 biggest ships of the world create as much uh, toxic uh, emissions. Uh, they are so bad. Uh, for the air, for humanity, for everything on the world, like all cars together on the world. This is not in volume, but in the uh, because there is so much sulfur and uh, NOx in there. So you can believe this. It's, uh, it was in the newspaper also. And uh, we did not know all those uh, stuff when we began it, but now it gives us even a bigger reason to continue and uh, beat and fight forward. Uh, 50,000 cancer victims per year, you see, because of ship emissions, because uh, the, the exhausts coming out of big cargo ships are uh, so toxic that, uh, uh, that the air on the beach in, uh, in Holland is seven times uh, worse than the air in the Ruhrgebiet in uh, Germany. Um, those are the major shipping routes. Uh, you can see this is uh, the, the level of... Uh, of um <coughs> how dirty they are, the level of destruction in the air, which is done, uh, the red ones. And uh, those are the guys doing it. Uh, and nobody says that those companies, that they want to extinct us, or uh, that they want to fight uh, against uh, the environment. They are not doing it. What they do is uh, they bring stuff we need every day. And they bring it from the other side of the world. We are not. Uh, we cannot be really sure if this is necessary, but yeah, that's why I'm talking about this here. Uh, and also those ones, um, maybe you you have been you spent the time on those ships. They're really nice. You have everything there, and uh, you kill a lot when you are on a ship like this. The biggest ones uh, use about 500,000 liters of heavy oil in one day in 24 hours. Uh, this is uh, I don't know if Graz needs so much, and um, but good things which can happen when those ships uh, go aground. And why? Why do they do? Because they want to uh, serve us. We want everything bigger, faster, cheaper. Uh, everything must be in the supermarket at any time. And uh, that's why they do it. They make ships bigger and faster to, uh, uh, to, be, uh, to compete and to, uh, to serve this goal, you know? And uh, in this time, uh, they drive with heavy fuel oil, which means the uh, this is actually a, a waste product from the from the uh, diesel and uh, benzene production, and this is uh, the most toxic stuff you can uh, you can burn. But this is what we want, actually. I believe this, um, and there is uh, even an ideal form which I had in my adventurous days. <laughs> And uh, so this must be, this is life. If I don't have that, why do I? Why do I live? What, what do I have to do? You know, I want this, that's it. And uh, this is now a glimpse into the future. This is uh, the way we want uh, to help our environment to achieve this. If we have to sail stuff, we want to sail it clean. We want to uh, bring it with the wind. No, these three dudes were uh, meeting each other on an ocean crossing in the, the year 2000. And uh, here you can really see three uh, idealists and three different uh, passions were coming together, which was uh, 
uh, the passion for art and freedom and, uh, and entrepreneurship, which is Arjen, the first one. The passion for nature, which is uh, me, you might not even know who that is, it's in the middle. And uh, the passion for tradition and, uh, and shipping and sailing, as, uh, as, he, as Jorne, as he had that uh, in his youth already. And where is the best place to combine, combine those things uh, on a sailing ship? You have, the, you have the freedom because you go wherever you want and uh, nobody tells you how fast or how you go there, you do it yourself. Uh, what is the energy? How is that ship driven by the wind? It's nature, nothing else. And the tradition, tradition is the nice. You can see that on the, on the, on the picture we had before. There is not much traditional, but on those ships, tradition uh, like this is something which makes your eye even happier. So, how can we put this in, uh, into reality? We make a business plan, like we heard also, business plan, it cannot be perfect. This was our business plan. It was not perfect, but almost. Uh, <coughs> because here is a little fault. We didn't take the coffee from Fogo from Cape Verdean because it was it's just too expensive and it's uh, not worse, so we took it from the Caribbean. But for the rest, this we made up in a bar. Jorne is artist. And uh, we made this up and till the day of today, it works. Uh, a second, uh, uh, second goal of our uh, little cargo ship Tres Hombres is the training. We have, uh, we have uh, up to 10 persons on board. We train and they, if they stay with us six to eight months, they go off the boat as a professional sailor and they can uh, uh, hire on any boat uh, they want. Good beginning of the dream looks like this. You need to have a lot of imagination, but we had. Uh, this was the past. This ship was uh, Tres Hombres. Uh, we found uh, the wreck of this ship, more or less, in Holland. Uh, it was a warship in uh, 1943, uh, built in Germany. And now our, uh, our mission was to transmit, uh, trans, uh, to convert a warship into a peace ship. And we said, we had somebody who could even work on the computer, a friend of us, and he made up this, uh, this plan, uh, this drawing, and with this we went out to the public. And of, sure, uh, of course, we made a lot of pictures of ourselves and said, yes, we are the, the great entrepreneurs and uh, you have to believe what we say. And uh, we print in the internet, we found some, uh, some shares, some old things. You, if you Google that, you can find it. Joanne is the artist, he made the drawing of the ship in there. We found a company in Panama uh, by a telephone. Uh, we put 1,250 uh, euros on there and we sold 250 of these shares. Uh, to get the money together to build uh, uh, the first sailing cargo ship in the 21st century. Joanne. <laughs> As uh, Ernesto said already in the first speech, uh, you cannot do it alone and uh, you have always three things to do. So we shared it. Uh, Joanne, he was the intelligent one of us. Uh, we let him plan all the stuff. Uh, Boogie, he is the be most beautiful one. <laughs> he can, uh, and he could talk. He could talk very good too. And uh, and one had to work. <laughs> and um, so uh, the first thing to convert uh, a warship uh, is to rip out, rip out uh, its heart. And that's what we did. This engine was in the ship. Uh, we took it out, uh, and then we closed up the ship again. Uh, this was a work of two and a half years. We did with uh, 150 uh, volunteers, people from 25 nations who came to help us to make this dream uh, uh, come true in reality. And as you can see on the picture, we had so much fun, you cannot imagine it. <laughs> it is, uh, sometimes we had to stop working and uh, because we were laughing so much and had so much fun with so many languages that, uh, and I said, hey, let's go on, we need to finish the ship. And they just said, hey, go out and buy some beer and then come back. You know. <laughs> and that's what I did. Here a glimpse of the, uh, of the crew when we put the ship into the water and then we kept on uh, building the mast on and this is uh, what's coming out, uh, Tres Hombres, the fastest uh, cargo ship without engine in the world, uh, carrying 35 tons. <laughs> yeah. Carrying 35 tons of biological fair trade cargo 
and uh, when it arrives in the in the country of uh, destiny of destination then uh, this cargo is also fair transport that means it is transported fair by happy people who did a lot of work uh, with a, uh, a lot of effort with uh, little efficiency but a lot of fun and on the way which is which is the best one for the world there is nothing we do uh, wrong with shipping uh, rum and chocolate and uh, everything you can try out there to europe Okay, the voyages, uh, we are loading uh, stuff. We went to Haiti after the earthquake. Uh, oh, the, the time is running also here. And uh, uh, so just a little impression of sailing. It can be uh, like this, but this should not scare you to, uh, to join this ship. It is open for everybody. Everybody can be a trainee. So I hope that uh, all of you in the next 20 years come and, uh, and have a look and have a ride with our boat. Uh, on the voyages, we do everything ourselves. We are completely uh, um, uh, self-sufficient. We make our own sails. Uh, we have 5,000 liters of water with which we uh, we can cross the ocean twice with this. Uh, on Sunday, you get a bucket with uh, sweet water to wash yourself. For the rest, it's uh, salt water. Uh, comfort is not on the highest level uh, on our ship, but uh, nobody ever said anything about that when they uh, when they stepped off after a while. Fishing. Uh, this is a guy from the uh, from the Maritime College in in India, which uh, heard of us and came and uh, enjoyed a few months on board. Sailing, most thing we do. Uh, this is what everybody enjoys uh, enjoys the most for sure. Uh, also, we do maintenance. I don't want to show that because uh, you don't need to remember that. Uh, it also can be like this, really calm on the middle of the ocean. And uh, yeah, the impression of loading. Uh, the most precious goods uh, we have now that is uh, our tres hombres rum. This is how we uh, how we uh, finance ourselves. We have no uh, uh, subvention. We have no money from uh, from nobody. Actually, the the people who finance the ship they wait that we uh, gain so much with uh, selling our rum and chocolate, and from our trainees that they get uh, get back some uh, some money for their shares. Uh, but they are all the investors group for a project like this is called uh, Fools, Friends and Family. <laughs> so we know that they can wait a long time. It's no problem. <laughs> we buy local products for ourselves, for our food for the on the ship. Anyway, we try to make as lot of friends as possible because then when we come back the next time, uh, we don't pay the harbor money and everybody's helping us out and it works. On the yeah, on the ship it's hard work. Here is father and son. They uh, they shipped in for uh, for a voyage together over the ocean. And yeah, it is it is unforgettable on a ship like this. You're completely um, dependent on the wind and uh, on the weather. So this is what makes the difference. You if you also think about and uh, but the most what what I really uh, like about this that you don't think about starting uh, an engine. If you go just two knots or three knots, you think, oh, I have to be there because the, the cargo is waiting there. But no, you cannot. You just, you just uh, have to follow the wind. Uh, this is our figure, what I meant art, because uh, we are, uh, a lot of people who helped us were artists, and everybody uh, wants to leave his, uh, his signature on the ship, and this is something very, uh, really, we appreciate so much. And that's why uh, Tres Hombres is actually the uh, currently most beautiful sailing ship in the world, with the most details uh, all around. Here it's all uh, like old poems and, uh, and different magic things is are uh, hacked in there and uh, carved in there. Good. Um, uh, Joanne makes this. Uh, when you see, <coughs> we sell this with the rum also. This explains the route, how we were sailing. Uh, and this does not mean that uh, we found the rum bottle right there or the barrel. It was that the high pressure area came and uh, made us go 1,500 miles uh, the wrong way. So we spent 45 days uh, on the ocean without seeing land on this trip with, uh, in 2011. But those things happen. Uh, then when we are uh, back in Europe, we try to find the uh, most beautiful spots like here in Porto uh, to bring the message out because we, 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 don't, we like to sail, but we also want to uh, transmit our mission to, uh, to all kinds of people, young people, it doesn't matter. 
uh, everybody can join the ship. We also have people from 22, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> from 20 to 76 on board. I'm there. Uh, in the ports, we sell our precious goods. Uh, you can try them outside our rum. And uh, now, my last words. Um <coughs> We look into the future, 1958. This uh, is when in Germany they found out how to make big cargo ships uh, to mount uh, modern sails on it, to make it make them uh, compatible with modern ships. And uh, this is more than 50 years ago. And we have the newest uh, uh, designs, developments. Now the materials are much easier uh, to uh, to achieve and to make all this is, is much easier made than 50 years ago and it's still not there. And this, uh, I ask myself, why is that? We are uh, talking about this uh, years already now and are, uh, we were in TEDx Amsterdam, also Jon and my colleague was talking there, and still uh, we don't have 100 euros for the, uh, not even 100 euros for the 20 millions we need for this. Uh, and this is what we, yeah, if you if you remember a little bit of this talk, also, go out and uh, if you know somebody who has too much money, uh, <laughs> send him over to me, I can use it. <laughs> because this is uh, actually the message I want to bring through. Thank you.